Salam. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Mahavachachodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect, and shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. I'm <coughs> so like and pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be taught as don't be ashamed to repent. You know, don't be ashamed to repent. And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost again as well. Don't be ashamed to repent, all right, because at the end of the day, you know, it's a blessing to have uh, temporal grace because it's not it's not eternal, but it's temporal. You know, we have a second chance, you know, at this to be able to repent, to be able to receive the kingdom, to receive salvation. All right. So it's a blessing to repent, you know, because, again, if we were in the ancient world, you know, and we were under the laws, you will be put to death right then and there on the spot. You wasn't able to repent. You wasn't able to talk your way out of that situation either. You was just put to death right then and there. But through Yahweh Shai's blood, we're through a temporal grace period. So now we're able to repent. You know, so you as an Israelite, you shouldn't be uh ashamed to repent. You should be really pleased and happy about that. Cause you know, that's a blessing there. That's mercy of the Lord. And uh, we're going to get the um, <clears throat> definition for repentance. Repentance. It says the action of repenting, sincere regret, or remorse. All right. Let's look at some other similarities. Sorrow. Sorrow. It says a feeling of deep distress caused by loss, disappointment, or other misfortune suffered by oneself or others. All right. Sorrow. Right. So when you repent, you're really sorrowful. You, you're regretful. All right. You you're you know, you uh, remorse, you know, you. You know, want to repent for it, you know, you're ashamed. All right. But you shouldn't be ashamed. But, you know, when you're repenting, you're really sorrowful. You want to repent to the Lord and, and ask the Lord for mercy. All right. Because that's what the Lord. He wants us to do that. The Lord wants us to repent. Right. It's pleasing to the Lord. When you repent, it's not a bad thing to repent. Oh, damn, it's a bad because, you know, we, we all get that feeling in the flesh. You know, it, the flesh get us and it's like, oh, you know better. You messed up. You know, then you have in a low spirit like, dang, I don't think the Lord is dealing with me. You can't think like that. All right. You're in these we're in these carnal bodies and you're going to you're going to fall. All right. The main thing is to get back up and to keep pushing. All right. We're we're in these corrupt bodies that cause us to fall off. All right. You got Satan messing with you etc all right we're under the curses as well this is acts 3 and 19 it says repent ye therefore and be converted right and let's get the meaning of that word converted right ratification converted right it says of a building having been ad ad adapt adapt ad adapt to be unsuitable let me see get a better meaning let's go to the blue letter really quick because i always want to edify and if not, then we'll just go and get the definition and go to uh, the etymology. But this is uh, Acts 3 and 19. This is Acts 3 and 19. Let's go into the interliner of converted, right? Strong's G, 1994, epistrephal. Epistrephal. Gone. So, oh, shoot. Salakia. Yeah. Salakia, uh, just had a phone call, Salakia. Um, so this is the Greek word for uh, convert, right? And it is... Uh, Strong's G, 1994, epistrephal. Epistrephal. Which means transitively to turn to, to worship of the true power to cause to return to bring back and that's the more that's the most accurate meaning which is this right here that's what the word converted 
means it means to cause to return to come to bring back okay so that word converted it means to return come back right bring back it says repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins see your iniquities that you commit your sins that you that you you know because sins is what transgression of the law right you broke the laws right we all do that's why we have to repent repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord see so you want to repent you want to you should be wanting to repent all right there's nothing wrong with repenting all right that's a that's a beautiful thing to repent because that pleases the lord that shows the lord that lets the lord know that you truly you know are you know the lord knows man the lord knows before you know before you even know man when you the lord knows you're going to sin before you even sin so when you repenting that that is really pleasing in the eyes of the lord all right the lord can see you that you're trying the lord knows we're in these carnal bodies all right it's going to cause us to go off but the thing is you don't want to be willingly sinning though that's the thing it's a big difference between you know you're trying to purposely sinning you know you're not supposed to do this and you're doing it anyway you're doing it anyway that's willingly sinning so it's a, it's a difference between willingly sinning and you know you falling off you know because you know you got jake that say oh well you know we ain't perfect this is that yeah we're not perfect but you don't want to be willingly sinning and by telling yourself uh, you, uh god knows your heart and you have your own free will that's willingly sinning those are philosophies of willingly sinning though that's this is second it's second chronicles 7 and 14 if my people which are called by my name see because you got to know the name of the Lord. And we know the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashi Mashai, called by his name, right? It says, by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. See, so you got to turn from your wicked ways, man. You know, the scriptures say in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. It says, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, right? And how are you going to be able to seek the Lord? Through his men, his prophets, Luke 1 and 70, Matthew 10 and 20, right? It says, and turn from their wicked ways. So you got to put off the old man. You got to put off the old man. And actually, I'm going to get that precept out. That's one of my favorite uh, precepts there. All right. Let's get that out. Because I'm tired of talking about it. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 22. All right. Let's get that precept out. Because you got to put off the old man, right? The old man is the worldly worldly you, the person who you were in the world before you came into the truth, all right? This is Ephesians 4.22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, right? So that's, you got to put off the old man, all right? This is why we repent. This is why we ask the Lord for mercy. This is why we ask the Lord to consistently keep us in the, in the, in the ministry and strengthen us in the faith. Right. Then will I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. See, so the Lord will forgive you. All right. You got to be able to to have the, the the confidence. Right. And and the motive to repent. The Lord wants you to repent. It's not hard. It's not difficult, man. Yeah, you fell. Yeah, you did this. Yeah, you did that. But repent. You know. What you pray to the Lord for or pray to the Lord to is secret. It's between you and him. Nobody else. It's between you and Yahweh Bashim Alright. First John 1 and 9. It says, If we confess our sins, see, you confess your sins to the Lord, right? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. The Lord will forgive you for your sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because we all sin, right? The scriptures say we are as, as filthy rags. And let me get that precept as well, too. Alright, because we always mention that uh precept. But we never read it. So let me read, get that out too. You know. All right. There's a precept that talk about that. I believe it's Isaiah 64 and 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. We all are unclean. We all sin. We all fall short. Right. But the main thing is to what? Repent to the Lord. It says, and all our righteousness are as filthy as rags. See, we're all, we all sin. All of us sin, including myself. I'm not ashamed. And that's the thing, because these, these Israelite women, they think that, oh, you you guys are men of the Lord, but you, you guys act like y'all don't sin. Y'all know y'all sin. We all sin. 
but we don't willingly sin though. We don't sin purposely. That's a big difference. That's a big difference to purposely sinning. You know, willingly sinning, willingly sinning. Well, the Lord knows my heart. I'm going to go do this anyway. You know you're not supposed to get tattoos. Well, I'm going to get tattoos anyway. I'm in the truth. I'm going to get tattoos anyway. That's willingly sinning, bro. That's not, that's not, you know, uh, rehearsing the righteous acts. Like, look, I know tattoos is against the scriptures. I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm going to go get tattoos anyway. Even though the Lord said not to do it, I'm still going to do it anyway. No, that's willingly sinning right there, man. You know? Or committing adultery. Oh, that's that, that's that man's one wife. I'm still going to sleep with her anyway. That's willingly sinning, bro. That's going to be an abomination, and that's willingly sinning. So, yes, we are as this filthy wags. I just had to give some examples out because you got Jake's out there that just, that just you know, we're in the truth. They try to say we're over righteous and, you know, we act like we don't sin. Hell, yeah, we 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 do sin, but it ain't it ain't purposely, though. It ain't a thing where you willingly doing it, though. Well, we're going to, I'm a sin. I'm just going to do no. You know, we all sin. We all sin, including myself. We all sin. That's why we have grace. That's why we pray to the Lord. We pray without ceasing, and we ask the Lord for mercy because we know what the Lord will do to us. See, you guys don't know, and I don't understand that the Lord can, can kill you. You guys don't understand that. We know and understand that. So we all sin. Hell yeah, we all sin. I sin. But the main thing is what? We're not willingly sinning, though. We're not purposely doing it on purpose. You know, that's being wicked there, right? Isaiah 64, 6 but we are all as unclean thing, and all our, and all our righteousness, right? It says, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take. It says, so like it says, the leaf and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. See, so we're all sin. We all sin. But the main thing is that we're not willingly doing it, though. We're not willingly sinning. We're not doing it purposely. All right? We know the end result of that. That's why we're rehearsing the righteous acts, which is what? Keeping the laws and statutes and commandments to the best of our ability. Because we're not going to be able to keep the laws perfectly. We said The elders said that many times. Brothers said that many times. 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Come on. The Lord doesn't slack concerning his promise. It's going to come. It says that some men count slackness, but... Is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Because you want to repent. You should be repenting. You should be asking the Lord for mercy. Because if you're not doing that, 2 Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's going to come unexpected. The Lord's going to come back. We don't know when the Lord is coming back. We don't have the time. We can't give you dates. We can't give you 2020, 20, 17 uh, AD. Uh, 12 o'clock midnight. The must, no, we can't do that. We can't tell you when the Lord coming back. Now, what we can do is measure the time diligently in itself. You know, Second Ezra uh, six and uh, Second Ezra nine and one. Measure the time diligently in itself. Now, we can give you according to prophecy. You know, for tit for tat. You know, uh, uh, looking at the signs take place on the earth. But we can't give you the dates. We can't give you the time when the Lord. We can't do that. All right, we don't have that capability. The scriptures say no man knoweth when the Lord come back, right? So just because we don't know what day the Lord come back, that doesn't mean that you can do as thou wilt and sin purposely, though. That's a big difference there, too, because you got Jake's that got that. Well, since no one knows who the Lord come back, we can just keep doing what we're doing. No, you're going to get fucking destroyed. That's what's going to happen to you. Second Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and you don't want to get caught up on the unawares either. The scriptures say again, Luke 21, 34, 35, right? You don't want to get caught up in the unawares. You don't want to be in the cares of this life. It will get you caught up in the unawares. It says, In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are that that are therein shall be burnt up. And you don't want to be feeling the wrath and judgment of the Lord. If you don't repent and you don't seek the Lord now, you're going to get caught up in this prophecy. This is a future prophecy. This prophecy hasn't came yet. This is what Peter said, right? Peter stated this, and this prophecy hasn't came yet. You're going to get burnt up, and you don't want to be destroyed because that's going into the, the nuclear missiles, man. This is Matthew 4 and 17. From that time, Yahawashai began to preach and to say, repent. See, Yahawashai said this. The Messiah said this. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, so the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You want to repent. You want to seek the Lord. You want to repent. Right. You want to do as best as you can as an Israelite. You want to conduct yourself 
to, you know, righteously to the best of your ability. You want to follow, fall in line and follow the instructions given of Yahweh Bashim Ashai. Romans 2 and 4, it says, Or despise thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of Yahweh leadeth thee to repentance. See? So you should be wanting to repent, right? Verse 5, it says, But after thy hardness and impenitent mind, that word impenitent means no regrets or no shame. Two thirds of our people, they feel comfortable in wickedness. They obey wickedness. They feel comfortable in wickedness. All right? They don't, they don't have no remorse of their of their iniquities right romans 2 and 5 but after thy hardness and impenitent heart meaning mind impenitent mind meaning no regrets or no shame that word impenitent means no regret no shame our people they're not a great they're not ashamed or regretful or any remorse of their iniquities they feel comfortable in it it's like an everyday thing to them like it is what it is with them that's the type of spirit they have it says treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of the Lord. So you're going to feel the wrath of the Lord if you don't repent. Romans 2 and 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. So if you don't repent, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to you're going to feel the wrath of the Lord. That's why you want to repent. That's why you want to fear the Lord, man. So hey, Lord one is destined edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Kachodash. And double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazakah from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willing, that's what's edifying. So again, man, you ak you akim and akwathim, man, repent. All right, there's no shame to repenting. All right, it pleases the Lord. Right, it actually builds up your bond with the Lord, cause the Lord knows, the Lord knows how 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 challenging it is for us in these flesh, the things that we deal with on a daily basis, etc. Repent. There's nothing wrong with repenting. Don't be ashamed of repenting. All right, be grateful with it, because again, if we was in the ancient world and and we were under the laws, and you you know and you was break and we broke the laws in the ancient world, you would be put to death right then and there on the spot. You could not talk your way out of that situation at all. You was put to death right then and there on the spot, man. So it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing and a, a, a wonderful and merciful thing for the Lord to have mercy on us and to send down His only begotten Son so we can receive that temporal grace. So it's a blessing, man. That's 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 a beautiful thing. So Lord wants that's edifying. Till next time, I say shalom.